Well, hello. It is another edition of the Penguins Lunch here on Pittsburgh Sports Live. I'm Dan Kingerski. You can uh, catch us on PittsburghHockeyNow.com. Catch us on Twitter at PGH Sports Live. And, you know, actually, you know what? Instead of me telling you all these things, here, let me show you. There. There's that. We've got the nice little, nice little tool there. There's the YouTube page. And, of course, finally, well, there's me. Here's what's coming up on today's show. We will get into the Derek Broussard lineup situation. Full credit to Jason Mackey of the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette on, I think it was uh, Saturday. Maybe it was Friday that he got the exclusive with Mike Sullivan. And Sullivan spilled the beans a little bit on why the Derek Broussard to left wing situation is occurring. I've been a bit critical of the Penguins for considering it. We'll get into that. We'll also talk about the training camp battles that are looming beginning on Friday. Daniel Sprong, Zach Aston Reese, and a couple other uh, guys on the back end of the lineup will be uh, going tooth and nail to see who gets a sweater night in and night out. We'll also talk a little bit about uh, the Penguins' rookie camp. Although, based on reaction from the, the marketplace, from me, from the Post-Gazette, uh, The Athletic, we were, we were kind of commiserating as we all sat in Buffalo last weekend. And, and by the way, if you ever have any question about my dedication to hockey and covering the Penguins, I sat in Buffalo last weekend. Is there any? I, I did visit the Anchor Bar, and the, the wings are great. They're meaty. The sauce is good. They're wonderfully buttery as well. But I was in Buffalo, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll we'll touch on the rookie camp. Uh, there were a couple kids uh, I thought who opened some eyes, but as of uh, here on Wednesday, we've not received word uh, of any contracts being signed or or even tendered yet. Uh, the team really had a, a rough go up in Buffalo. Let's get to Derek Broussard uh, first. And left wing. So Broussard's uh, idea to get more ice time. He, he's being a team first guy. He's He comes into the exit interview. And for those of you unfamiliar, essentially an exit interview, it's like a performance review at your job, except it's the last day uh, of the season. You go into the coach's office, he tells you things he wants, didn't like, likes. The player tells the coach things he liked, didn't like, etc. Some guys obviously get more leeway to speak than uh, others. But Broussard says, hey, look, I had trouble adjusting to being a third-line center. He's typically a one or a two most places he's been, New York, uh, Ottawa. And, and, and he's like, hey, I think I can make a go of left wing. So the Penguins put this plan in place. And I guess I have to, to walk back any past criticisms of the Penguins uh, putting Broussard at left wing, thinking that um, they thought he could do a, a better job. The reality was the player asked for it. So let's fast forward now to the Penguins' depth chart. And uh, I'm going to pull it up here on uh, Pittsburgh uh, Hockey Now uh, real quick. And you can see, where does Derek Broussard fit into this? Are you going to displace Jake Gensel? No. You know, Gensel is going to ride side saddle to Sidney Crosby as long as he's putting the puck in the net. Do you really want to break up Haglin and Malkin? They were rock solid and brilliant last year. Yeah, Haglin didn't have very good stats. But do you really want Derek Broussard playing just a, a puck retrieval four-check game? That seems a, a, a big waste of a lot of his skills, doesn't it? So he's a third-line left winger on the Penguins. Or he's a third-line center. There just isn't any way around that. I think it's actually a tip of the cap to Mike Sullivan and the Penguins that indeed uh, they're willing to give this a shot to make the player happy. I'm going to put this out there, full well knowing what I'm saying here. If he's having trouble getting going in, let's say, the, the 14 minutes or the 13 minutes of five-on-five -five ice time that uh, he would figure to get a night, if he's, if he's one of those guys who just needs more ice... 
is he the right guy for the Penguins? The Penguins, uh, in effect, because the market has not gone down on Derek Broussard. Now, a couple of the uh, suitors may have changed, although the Winnipeg Jets should still be very interested. If you'll recall, the Jets were uh, within a hair's breadth of getting Broussard until Vegas stepped in to deny Winnipeg Broussard and steer him to the Penguins because I guess the Penguins were the last team left and they, they probably felt a little bit guilty getting Marc-Andre Fleury and a second-round pick in the expansion draft from the Penguins. So uh, they, they did Jim Rutherford uh, a, a solid there. Um, but if that's the case, if Broussard's not going to adjust well to being a third liner, perhaps the Penguins can move him along, package Broussard, or actually get a package back for Broussard, I should say, get uh, a third line center, someone who's, who uh, excels in those 12 to 14 minutes of five on five play and hey, stockpile uh, a little bit of uh, prospects or draft picks. That would be the best case scenario for the Penguins if, and, and there's a giant capital uh, if there, if Broussard is not going to be the guy who excels in that third line center role. The Penguins won't get a better center than Derek Broussard in the trade market. They just uh, won't. I mean, here's a guy who was a 60 point center, great playmaking skills. He's got the speed. He, he's got the smarts. He's got the leadership. But not every situation is, is perfect, and not, not every situation works. And I, I think that's uh, very important to note going forward and, and watching this training camp, how that unfolds. Another battle will be Daniel Sprung. Here's the kid who's it's, – it's unfair, but no one ever said life was fair, Right. Daniel Sprung, in just his, you know, he's had one and a half professional seasons. They're, they're just, let me get my name off Sprung. There we go. <laughs> let me get me back there. Sprung has essentially played one and a half professional seasons, and, and yet now he's no longer waiver exempt. If he doesn't make the team, if he doesn't uh, make a splash here in training camp, he doesn't prove his, his value, well, then um, he's in trouble already. He, he could find himself in a, in a whole new situation. That's unfair to him. That's unfair to the Penguins. If there's one uh, dark spot or one mistake on Jim Rutherford's resume with the, the Pittsburgh Penguins, that certainly was his handling of Daniel Sprong. Now, let me tell you straight up that uh, this is secondhand, but it's been talked about a around the Penguins, that, that Rutherford is Daniel Sprong's rabbi in the room. And that, that expression simply means, you know, Rutherford is Sprong's champion. He, he tried to make it work when Sprong was a rookie and, and just couldn't get there. And so... Sprong losing that first season was, was bad. Then he gets hurt as a member of the Black Aces in San Jose, injures his shoulder, has to get surgery, misses most of year two. So finally last year is his first real full professional season in which he got on the ice as a professional in the American Hockey League, got to spread his wings and, and grow. Now, on PittsburghHockeyNow.com, in fact, right now at 11.30, Shelly Anderson published her story uh, from the Penguins' unofficial practice yesterday. And you can see it there. I'll, I'll, I'll make some movement. And uh, she, she got some quotes from Clark Donatelli as well, the Wilkes-Barre Scranton head coach, uh, with some pub for our great sponsor, Joshua R. Lamb, uh, the attorney. Donatelli said, look, in the long run, he's going to be fine. He's going to have a fine year. But what else do you expect his coach to say? Now, we know that Sprong frustrated Donatelli a little bit last year. He was a healthy scratch in January at one point. Sprong has to, to make a little bit of a move, or this guy, Zach Aston Reese, 
is waiting right there to scoop up that ice time on the fourth line left wing. Let's talk a little bit about uh, Zach Aston Reese because obviously his season ended prematurely last year at the hands of Tom Wilson. I, I don't yet know if Wilson ever called to apologize. He hadn't within the first week when Aston Reese was essentially eating yogurt and, and soup and uh, had no solid foods. It was, oh, there went Rowdy. Hang on. Let's put Rowdy right back where he belongs. Aston Reese, uh, he said his training this offseason wasn't hampered. If you look ahead to training camp, that was my worry for him, that that he wouldn't have been on the ice soon enough. He, he would have lost some weight. But he said he had people taking great care of him, and, and he didn't lose too much time in training. Because here's Zach Aston Reese's uh, big issue, and that is he lacks explosiveness in the skates. He doesn't have that jump. He doesn't have that, that speed that will allow him to truly participate in the Penguins' uh, high end. I, I almost said high octane, but that's a dirty word when you work with pit people. Uh, for that high end forecheck of, of the Penguins. So Aston Reese kind of has to prove himself as well. Aston Reese's knock, besides the skating, or, or I should say not knock, but his obstacle, he has to decisively beat out Daniel Sprong in this training camp because Sprong is not waiver exempt and Aston Reese can indeed be sent down to the AHL without the Penguins uh, losing a player. So he has to deliver a knockout blow, figuratively speaking, not uh, literally, in training camp just to make the team. And then you've got Derek Grant lurking as well. Derek Grant signed to a one-year $650,000 contract, had 24 points with the Anaheim Ducks last year, 12 goals, 12 assists, finally had his, his little bit of a, a coming-out party. Grant is also a big guy, like Zach Aston Reese. Grant is 6'5 and, and 215, likes to drive to the net. So putting all of that in perspective now, and I, I, I won't go back to the, the depth chart. Maybe I should, huh? Let's go back to the depth chart. And the Penguins don't need to carry 23 players. Create salary cap space. They, they most likely will carry 22 un, until a 23rd player is necessary which further limits uh, Sprong and Zach Aston Reese's battle. There, hop on the YouTube page. Make sure to subscribe as well. The odds that uh, ZAR makes the team are long. He does have to have a great camp because they're going to shoehorn Daniel Sprong into that 14th uh, roster spot or 14th forward spot. They're just... They, they're, not, they're not going to lose Sprong unless he shows up uh, Friday and is clueless. If he has any sort of uh, clue, he sticks around uh, until uh, that experiment ends, until they just try to slip him through waivers, trade him, or uh, realize that uh, it's not going to work and, and cut bait and let him uh, flourish or try to flourish somewhere else. Here's another player uh, thrown into the mix for the Penguins training camp, and that's Jimmy Hayes. He's another big guy, 6'5", uh, about uh, 210, 215, can play right wing on that fourth line, and that's really what the Penguins need to take a look at because they, they've got the center and left wing set with Cullen and Riley Sheehan. So that, that right wing has a whole lot of suitors between Grant, between Hayes, between Sprung, and between uh, ZAR, and there's only one spot, and probably only one spot in the press box, and that's why ZAR and Hayes, who is on a uh, two-way contract, probably wind up in uh, Wilkes-Barre. Let's talk a little bit about Matt Murray. This is probably the image you remember of Murray, right? Some saves that he would have liked to have made and some saves you wanted him to make last season. It was... 
It was a rough year, a 907 save percentage. What you saw in Pittsburgh hockey now today, Murray wants to be a leader. And, and that took me by surprise. I don't know if it took you by surprise as much. But here's Murray at 24 years old. Suddenly he's the seasoned guy on the Penguins bench. Mark andre Fleury spent years as a leader in the Penguins locker room. That's not a usual thing for a goaltender. Do you want to see Fleury again? Uh, I'm sure you do. I, I took him off way too fast. But Fleury was the glue in that locker room. And I think Murray, being uh, Fleury's mentee, would like to fill those shoes a- as well. And at 24 years old, it just shows such incredible maturity on Murray's part to even say that publicly. Like, yeah, I want to be a leader. The guys behind him. Murray could be a a first-class dick, (laughs) to put it bluntly. He could be like most other goaltenders would be. I I won't tell you who, but I I had been witness years ago to a a, a Penguin goalie battle in in which uh, the one goalie, this is back in the old Mellon Arena days, and, and so the backup goaltender would sit in the corner on a chair and if uh, the one goalie let in a bad goal, you know, they skate away, they skate down in the corner, clear some ice, clear their head. And this other goalie actually said a couple times, whew, that was a bad goal, to his teammate. And, and I, I think most uh, goalies have that very individual, very uh, isolated mindset. They spend their entire game by themselves. That's why goalies are weird guys, usually. And, uh, you know, Marty Brodeur, Patrick Waugh, they weren't uh, necessarily happy guys. They were surly guys. And you go back even to Tom Barrasso and Penguins lore, who probably set the definition for surly. Here's Murray taking a step forward. Sure, he could have answered the question yesterday, what did you work on this summer? What do you want to work on in training camp? Sure, he could have uh, pandered, said, yeah, my glove hand. Or uh, I I want to work on a little bit more lateral mobility. But he went right at it. I want to be a leader. He can really help Tristan Jari. He can really help Casey DeSmith, uh, a, a couple of very inexperienced guys behind him. And that just it really speaks well of of Matt Murray. Tristan Jari is a guy with the pedigree before long could be knocking on the door, shoving Murray out. It's it's entirely possible. From what uh, we've been told, Jari is showing up to camp 20 pounds lighter than he was last year. And by the way, Jari is a gregarious sort. And so is Casey DeSmith. The guys in Wilkes-Barre talked about forgetting DeSmith was a goalie. He would just hang with the guys, kind of, you know. Goalies are kind of like kickers, I guess. They're they're just off uh, to themselves. Now let's um, talk a a little bit about uh, development camp here. Here was the most exciting moment in development camp. The end of game two against the New Jersey Devils on Saturday when there was a fight. (laughs) I, I hate to say that. But you take a look here at the, uh, the Penguins' defense. Jeff Taylor, Dane Burks, Jacob Haroff. Kalen Addison was by far, uh, I think, the, uh, the star of the Penguins. And it was actually uh, number 70, Joseph um, Masonius, who got into the fight. But the Penguins' rookie team did terribly. They, they lost to Boston in their best game on Friday, 4-2, to two, and they trailed 4 nothing. I think Boston uh, took their foot off the gas. The Bruins had no less than half a dozen first and second round picks on their team. The Penguins, zero first round picks, one second round pick, and that was Addison. Zero third round picks, one fourth round pick, and that was Sam Lafferty. Lafferty, Samuel of 2014 the holidaysburg kid was the the penguins second highest drafted prospect on that team so 
they performed about like you would have expected. Besides uh, Addison, uh, Jeff Taylor is a, se- a seventh-round pick. Everybody else was an undrafted free agent, and the, all of the goalies were undrafted free agents as well, and the Penguins just got spanked. Their Saturday game against New Jersey was a 6-2 loss, and it was 6 nothing before the Penguins. Uh, Adam Johnson was the, the master of the garbage time goal uh, up in Buffalo. He's quick, is Adam Johnson. I know a lot of you asked me uh, about him. He, he's, he's quick on his skates, don't get me wrong. I didn't notice him in the first two periods of, of Friday and Saturday, though. That was a huge problem. He scored a couple really nice goals late in the third period of Game 1 and Game 2. I want to see more from Adam Johnson. He's got more seasoning. Maybe it was just rookie tournament. He was He's 24. Maybe he kind of blew it off a, a little bit. That maybe uh, can't be discounted. But he's, he'll need a spectacular training camp and then a real strong start in Wilkes-Barre to be on the Penguins' radar for anything more than a, a late-season call. He's probably going to spend the entire season in in Wilkes-Barre, just given the Penguins' depth on the NHL side and the fact that the Penguins have 21 NHL contracts, including 13 forwards on NHL contracts. But otherwise, uh, my notes from from the Penguins' rookie camp, Jordy Bellarive looked a little bit slow. Uh, I mean, given his summer, you really can't ask too much from Bellarive. He had a great first period of game one. He was shot out of a cannon to start, but then he, he, he slowed down, and uh, he went through full training camp with the Lethbridge Hurricanes. He went through uh, a couple preseason games before flying uh, east to be with the Penguins. It very well could be he hit the wall a little bit, too. But whatever it is, uh, certainly he gets a pass. Kalen Addison, though. Uh, Clark Donatelli called him shifty and, and small. In fact, uh, let's pull up uh, that lineup uh, once again. Addison is going to be on the doorstep of the NHL, I think, within a couple years. I don't know if he'll make Team Canada this year. I mean, they're, they're really good. But he has a chance. He, he, he's that kind of guy. He might get stuck as a 4A player, one of those defensemen who can put up 50 points in the AHL, but never really uh, find traction in the NHL. I'm thinking of a guy like Brad Hunt, who, who kind of bounced from St. Louis, Nashville, Vegas last year over the last couple of years, actually. Very good in the power play, very good offensively. Addison has to prove he can be good defensively. I thought he was solid in the rookie camp defensively. The thing I noticed about Addison, and Donatelli called him shifty and, and crafty. I noticed he, he's very quick on his skates. He's also very technically sound in some areas. He got back into position in the defensive zone and turned his hips, got his stick in the right position. That I thought was very important. I didn't see the other Penguins defensemen doing that. Even older guys who have spent some time in the American Hockey League or, or other places weren't doing that. Giving their defensive partner a target to get out of trouble. And that's why the Penguins lost 10-2 to to Buffalo yesterday, their defense just um, was was brutal. It was absolutely uh, brutal to watch. I don't know how the goaltender played on Monday. I don't think it matters too much. It, it, um, the, the Penguins had trouble, and there's just no two ways about it. The Penguins' best prospect who wasn't there, Casper Bjorkvist, will be a junior uh, at Providence this year. He couldn't participate, from what I'm told, because that was a pro camp and he's an NCAA player. That's the only guy who was really missing who could have made a difference. The Penguins' third-round pick in 2016, Clayton Phillips, didn't look very good in, uh, in, in development camp in June. He looked like he was a, a good couple miles away from being uh, even a professional. If I didn't know he was a third-round pick, uh, I would have uh, really just written off any chance he had. And just a quick side note before we move on here, 
Uh, look at the Penguins' 2016 draft. Absolutely, uh, it, it's decimated. Curtis, uh, not Curtis, <laughs> uh, Lauzon, their second-round pick, is battling a career-threatening neck injury. Phillips, their third-round pick, is a long ways off. Their fifth-round pick, Jan Drozd, um, I, I, don't, I don't see him uh, earning an NHL sweater. And there you go. That's, that's really been – that's it for the 2016 draft. I think uh, maybe Militech was, was part of that. And Sam Militech's a very interesting guy. If you like projects for your prospects – Watch him. He's got a good shot, good eyes, good feet. He is all over the ice, man. And that puck follows him. But it looks like the Tasmanian devil out there a little bit. He's, he's kind of all over the ice. He's really going to have to clean up his game before he's, he's ready. So we've, we've hit Broussard. We've hit Murray, Sprong, Zach Aston, Reese. And uh, I think next we, we should probably next week – We'll, we'll examine the camp battles a, a little bit more. But the Penguins training camp beginning Friday, hallelujah. Thank God, you know. Um, we'll, be, we'll be covering it on Pittsburgh Hockey Now extensively. We'll, we'll be there. And uh, here, let's just show you. For those of you who don't subscribe to PHN Extra, we did a thing uh, on Chris Letang yesterday. said he feels a million times better I, I guess it's not going to come up here uh, quickly enough but Latang is a guy if he has a better year in 2018-19 how much better is that Penguins defense going to be you, you factor in uh, Jack Johnson cleaning some bodies from the crease and uh, banging some people in the corners you factor in Jamie Alexiak doing the same all of a sudden the Penguins have a deep six that's uh talented that's that's heavy that's gritty they're gonna be pretty good i'm telling you uh don't argue with old bud moonshine the penguins are going to be a uh a rock solid team all right that's gonna uh, just about do it for us i uh, appreciate you hopping on board do me a favor subscribe to the youtube channel we actually we need uh, a few hundred more before YouTube will let us uh, start collecting the money. We appreciate all of the minutes that you've watched. We appreciate uh, everything. So uh, until we do this again uh, next week, uh, I'm Dan Kingersky. Oh, wait, you know, here, we'll, I'll, I'll put some cool stuff there. That, that's me. Follow me at the Dan Kingersky. Tomorrow, Mike Vakovkan. Friday, Alan Saunders with the Friday football show. He'll look ahead to some high school football and preview Pitt, Georgia Tech. He'll have uh, some comments from Pat Narduzzi as well on Friday. All right, now I can say goodbye until we talk again, kids. Have fun.